I can be the Japanese easiest pie. When he was about three, he started to draw a lot. He started to sign some of those drawings, James Three. He would just be crying. It's an airplane crash on fire. So one day I asked him, I said, why are you signing your name James Three? His response was, well, I'm the third James. It's being called the case for reincarnation. There you go. This seven-year-old boy from Louisiana not only shares the same name as this World War II fighter pilot, they seem to share the same soul. Initially, um, what caught my attention was James's extreme fascination with airplanes. James Leininger's parents don't believe in past lives, but realized early on their son was unique. I took him to the Cavanaugh Flight Museum that every time we went to the area where the World War II aircraft were located, he would just stand there and point, mesmerized. He was barely two years old. Here's home video. While the other youngsters viewed the bombers with a childlike curiosity, little James recognized the steely war machines with a certain familiarity and comfort. The pilot put them on? I said, oh look, there's a bomb on the bottom. He said, that's not a bomb, that's a drop tank. That innocent trip to the museum would dramatically alter their lives and the lives of complete strangers forever. He started having the nightmares, and that was my first indication that there was something wrong. The screaming was not like a normal child crying. It was a panic-stricken, terrorized screaming. Over and over again, James had the same terrible nightmare, four to five times a week. He was too young to explain the dream, but he could draw. He started doing these little drawings of airplanes shooting at other airplanes or being shot down. It's the only thing he still draws. Bombing ships, you see men parachuting. Here's another one where planes are dropping bombs. And this is a carrier, and you can see where what he does is when he draws them, he starts with just a picture, and then he just starts drawing lines all over the place like a, he's playing out a movie. I kept thinking, where is he getting this? Uh, what's he watching on television? But I was a stay-at-home mom, so I know that there wasn't anything that he was being exposed to. Not exposed to in this life, but perhaps, just maybe, somebody else was. <laughs> Decades earlier, another little boy named James grew up in South Bend, Indiana, with the same insatiable fascination with airplanes. He became a fighter pilot for the Navy and shipped off to fight in World War II. March 3rd, 1945, during a mission near Iwo Jima, he took a direct hit, was declared missing and presumed dead. He would wake up in the middle of the night, he'd be laying on his back, kicking his feet up at the ceiling and screaming. It was almost like if you were laying on your back inside a box and you're trying to kick the lid off the box. When I would wake him up, he would just be crying. He'd say, airplane crash on fire, a little man can't get out. He said that over and over, night after night. What goes through your mind when your two-year-old says things like that. It freaked me out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I can see in your face that it's, it's startling and it, um, um, it, it's frightening. I was alarmed by the frequency of the dreams or nightmares. This was just the beginning. Nothing could prepare Andrea and Bruce Leininger for what James revealed next. And I remember he laid on his back and he did the same motion like he did in the nightmares. He laid on his back and kicked up at the ceiling and he goes, Mama, the little man's going like this. And he laid on his back and kicked his feet up. The little man's going, ooh, 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 can't get out. And I said, well, who's the little man, baby? And he goes, me. They have the same name and boyish good looks. James M. Houston, raised in the Midwest. James M. Leininger, a young boy from the bayou. Whoa! There's something in the eyes. It's undeniable. That's not all they share. Somehow James Houston's spirit has affected my son, either through reincarnation. I don't know how it happened. Initially, um, what caught my attention was James's extreme fascination with airplanes. And every night, he slept with his G.I. Joe action figures, which he named. I took him to the Cavanaugh Flight Museum. Here's home video. While the other kids casually look at the plane, two-year-old James seems to inspect it. 
watch as he checks the underbelly, then climbs inside, donning the headset. The final put him on? I thought Bruce and I were just going to faint. They questioned what kind of plane? Corsair. Why did your airplane crash? My plane was shot down. Who, who shot your plane? He looked at me like I was a village idiot. He said, The Japanese. I kept thinking, where is he getting this? I was a stay-at-home mom, so I know that there wasn't anything that he was being exposed to. Not exposed to in this life, but perhaps, just maybe, somebody else was. <laughs> Decades earlier, James Houston grew up with the same insatiable fascination with airplanes. He became a naval fighter pilot and fought in World War II. March 3rd, 1945, during a mission near Iwo Jima, he took a direct hit. At age 21, was declared missing and presumed dead. Where did he take off from a boat? Do you remember the name of your boat? He said, Natoma. Found uh, several thousand hits on the word Natoma. The USS Natoma Bay launched into battle, headed for Iwo Jima in the fight for Lady Golf. It's the biggest naval battle in the history of the world. Leo Pyatt served on the ship. From his home in Ohio, he organizes the Natoma Bay reunions. That's how Bruce found him. I wanted to disprove it. He asked uh, a few questions about, uh, did I know some of the people? Oh, yeah, I remember those people. And uh, so he, he got uh, very uh, quiet. It was all real. The people and places James described actually existed. And remember those G.I. Joe dolls that James named? Turns out, three men with the same names, first and last, served on the Natoma and were killed in action. James said they greeted him in heaven after his crash. I'd always asked him, do you remember what your name was? And he always said James. But his name is James. Yes, there was a Jim Houston, or rather large shell. Just hit him in the, the engine and it burst into flames and, and went down. They showed Leo the drawings. He was uh, right on the nose. I'm sure, in my mind, that he was there. Leo invited James, now three, to the reunion. James recognized several pilots, even called them by name. You're Bob Greenwald. <laughs> I'm serious. And he never met Bob Greenwald. No, he'd never met him before. And someone else was invited. James Houston's sister, Anne. And he goes, uh, it's not Anne, it's Annie. She wasn't my oldest sister. I had an older sister than that. And I said, you did? Who was that? And he goes, Ruth. I mean, Ruth. Annie is what they called me when I was little, knowing my name and my sister's name, the things that my brother did when he was a kid. It's too amazing to describe how he would feel that, that way, but he does. He considers me his sister. But does she consider James her brother? I think it's probably a reincarnation of my brother. Anne was so touched, she gave James items from her brother's final effects. The little George Washington bust had been on my brother's desk all through school. I said, where's the statue? He said, I put it on my desk. As James gets older, his memories of James Houston and the nightmares are beginning to fade. But his knowledge of airplanes and his passion for flying continues to soar. The Corsair was my favorite fighter. The Corsair was fast. Agility was very good. Why him? James has never said anything about <laughs> why he's here. One of God's unexplained mysteries. Dan Stratford, Fox 8 News.